Okay. So it was, as soon as he came near the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. So Moses' anger became hot, and he cast the, ta the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Okay, this verse, as you probably know, is the one talking about how Moses reacted to coming down, seeing the people having uh, made the golden calf and whoring around the golden calf while he was up on the mountain getting the law from the Lord. In this video, we're going to be going over the golden calf and Aharon and Moses. And we're going to be straightening some things out here. We're going to do that by paralleling Moses' behaviors to Yah's behaviors. So as you can see here, Moses' anger became hot. Furthermore, he cast the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Okay, so let's figure out if this was a good thing that Moses did or a bad thing. How did Yah react to this? Thus says Yah, let every man put his sword on his side and go in and out from entrance to entrance throughout the camp. And let every man kill his brother, every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. As you can see, Moses got angry, Yah got angry. Moses' anger flaring up was not disconnected from Yah's anger being kindled. From this proper standpoint, let's look at this story again from this fresh, renewed standpoint. Okay, let's look at the uh, Moses throwing down the tablets, that action that he did. What was the result of him throwing down the tablets, right? Well, it took the law away from the people. Was this right or wrong? Well, I'm going to say it's right, because they were behaving in an unworthy manner, a manner that showed they were not yet responsible enough to receive the law, not the people or the few wicked among them. You see, the law is not a burden. The law is a gift and a good thing. In Luke it says, Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering you hindered. If we're talking about a burden and a curse, the lawyers, they wouldn't be in a circumstance where the Father is casting woes upon them for taking them away from the people. They would be more of the Moses figure, defending and protecting the people from an evil thing, but as you can see, that's not the case. The law is a gift and a good thing. Furthermore, in Deuteronomy it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yah, thy Elohim to observe and do all his commandments which I command you this day, that Yah, your El, or your God, will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Again, we have the idea of the law, both in the New and the Old Testament, being connected to the idea that it is a good thing and the result of it is a good thing. So let's say the law um, did not strengthen the people. Let's say that God did not require strength from his people. Let's put ourselves in a world for a moment, imaginations, <laughs> using our imaginations, let's put ourselves in a world where that's the case. So imagine this, an Israel of God not the nation of Israel, but an Israel of God. Real, true men and women who have fully given their lives in a crazy extreme way to the Lord. Matriarchs, patriarchs that we can look up to. Set on high above all the nations of the earth, claiming to be of God, but some of them are worshiping idols, and the rest are too weak to restrain the others? Too weak to turn his people 
back to him? Too weak to serve justice on the wicked? That's a hopeless world, and that's not the world we live in. Why? Because our God is good, and he requires strength from his people, the kind of strength that we see Moses displaying. Moses displaying not his own strength, but God's strength here. Aaron was too weak to perform this, this being the turning the people back to God, serving justice on the wicked. Does that make him unrighteous? No, it does not. Moses handled it properly. Further, Aaron got back on track when a strong leader was there to get him on track. Okay, we're going to change gears a little bit here. But before we do that, we're going to note this. Only a few of the people were killed. 3,000 of so many. Just a small, small fraction of loud bad apples led the people astray. Yet, the repercussions were shared throughout the whole camp. Okay, let's explore another one of Moses' actions in reaction to this circumstance. Moses having the people drink the grindings of the calf. This is a picture, believe it or not, of the new covenant at work in Moses. What, what, what? Hold the laundry. Let's backpedal a little bit. You know about fixie bikes, let's do a little reverse pedaling, like on a tricycle. What do you mean, the new covenant at work in him? The new covenant is for the New Testament. There's no new covenant in the Old Testament. Well, let's explore what the new covenant's structure is. One of the things in the structure is that the law will be written on our hearts, right? Okay. Yeshua is the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the earth. No man comes to the Father but through Yeshua. You see, Yeshua is intimately connected with the new covenant. It was his very work that ushered in the new covenant, making his word available to all people. That's the world that we live in now. The Holy Spirit's poured out on the whole earth. Free will hasn't been taken away, but the Holy Spirit has been poured out on the whole earth. You see, an adulterous woman's fate is the same as described in Torah. The same as what Moses did to the people. This command was not given yet. We don't see it in this book here. It's possible that God gave him the command during the 40 days on the mountain, but all of this is so perfectly paralleled with the true nature of the new covenant that I'm going to say that, uh, that that's not how this happened. Instead, I'm going to say that Moses' desire, his heart's desire, led him to take this extreme and odd measure in handling what had happened before the law uh, regarding this sort of behavior was given to him. That's the tablet of his heart, having the law written on it. That's the new covenant at work. You see, those who are loved of God and who love God back were not keeping the law for salvation. It clearly says that that's the inappropriate use of the law and that you will be cursed for doing so. We keep the law because we're in relationship with God, because we're living in his house and it's our desire to please him. And it says that he who loves me, Yeshua, he who loves me, I just said that wrong. He who knows my commands and keeps them, it's him who loves me. You see, it's love for God. It's being in relationship with him that results in the tablet 
of the law being written on our hearts. Okay, there is a lot more here in this uh, looking at Moses from the right standpoint, but uh, that's enough to help buffer the enemy for you while in your studies. Uh, part two is coming right up. There should be a little clicky click where you can click for part two on the screen somewhere. Um, if you don't see it, I'll see if I can't put the dis uh, a link in the description, uh, but I promise you it's there. If you go to uh, the videos part of this YouTube page, you should be able to find it. I will also uh, work to make a playlist for it. In part two of the key TSA videos, we will be going over this same structure but straightening out the thought processes for Aaron's character. So go ahead and click that if it's there, and I'll see you there.